Space Jam A New Legacy is one big bundle of studio synergy, filled with cameos, easter eggs and references to hundreds of films, TV shows and sporting moments. And while some of this is pretty obvious, the overloaded nature of these elements means it's super easy to miss a lot. With the movie finally opening globally, I've combed through it scene by scene to pick out all the fantastic stuff that is bulked in. I'll be breaking this video into segments which are all time coded down below to make it easier for you to skip around the stuff you're most excited about. Of course, naturally, even though this video is super long, there will be things that I missed, so if there's anything that you saw that I didn't, don't be afraid to share them in the comments below. At that, let's get into it. Okay, let's start at the most obvious place and sift through all the references, easter eggs and cameos to various media scattered throughout the movie. One of the film's opening scenes sees a young LeBron James, circa 1998, preparing to take to the court in a high school basketball match. Pre-match, he's seen enjoying a quick game on the Nintendo Game Boy, the popular handheld console of the era. In the present day, LeBron's son Dom has a poster for comic book Zango, a cover produced by comic artist and illustrator Hugo Canuto as part of an Orisha-inspired Afro-Brazilian take on various Marvel comics, including Thor and The Avengers. When we visit the Warner Brothers studio, there is an absolute litany of easter eggs. In various establishing shots of the lot, we can see movie posters for a number of mostly new Warner Brothers films and series, including Scoob, Tom and Jerry, In the Heights, Matrix Revolutions, The Big Bang Theory, Teen Titans Go to the Movies, Birds of Prey, Aquaman, and even James Gunn's upcoming The Suicide Squad. Inside the studio at a pitch meeting, LeBron sits with numerous Warner execs to discuss their latest AI technology, Warner 3000. In the pitch meeting, the crew sit around a table, and in the background we can see various busts of other Warner Brothers characters, including Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Marvin the Martian, the Cowardly Lion from The Wizard of Oz, Gizmo from Gremlins, and Dot from The Animaniacs. More busts can be seen in a hallway as LeBron and his son Dom leave the meeting. Continuing around the hallway, Dom walks past an old photograph of the iconic Warner Brothers water tower, likely from the 1930s judging by the logo, and another photo of the actual Warner Brothers, the studio's founders, Harry, Albert, Sam and Jack, likely dating to the early 1920s. Also in the studio, one of the execs, played by Sarah Silverman, can be seen sitting at her office desk with posters for Aquaman and Joker behind her. She's also seen reading the November 25, 2020 issue of Variety Trade Magazine, which features Toon Saloon's Wolfwalkers on the cover. She then receives an email from the film's antagonist, LG Rhythm, and a quick glimpse at her inbox reveals a selection of emails, all sent by names of artists working in New Legacy's visual effects and story team. A nice little easter egg to those that made it all happen. Back in the executive meeting, we meet LG Rhythm, who pitches the Warner 3000 tech to LeBron and the audience in the form of a small animated instructional video. While this kind of thing is pretty common on studio tours and theme park attractions, this is is likely a nod to Universal's Jurassic Park, which uses Mr. DNA to explain the theme park to the film's protagonists and the audience. Throughout the pitch, Al shows examples of various Warner media that can be utilised in the potential project, and a ton of film posters scroll along the screen. Ones that are most notable include The First Space Jam, 1989 Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Begins, Lego Batman, Joker, Wonder Woman, Justice League, 2016's Suicide Squad, Dunkirk, Inception, The Polar Express, Tim Burton's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, Casablanca, Singing in the Rain, The Matrix, Clash of the Titans, 1933's King Kong, The Mask, various Harry Potters, and various TV series, including Supergirl, The Flash, Black Lightning, and The Big Bang Theory. LG pitches a series of movie possibilities to LeBron in the form of animation, including Batman vs LeBron, which sees LeBron as Mr. Freeze going up against Batman, LeBron of Thrones, which sees LeBron burst onto the scene riding Game of Thrones 
Thrones, Drogon the Dragon, and LeBron and the Chamber of Secrets, where LeBron is seen in Gryffindor gear playing a game of Quidditch and catching the snitch. Later, when LeBron and Dom enter the Warner 3000 server farm, LeBron quips, what in the Matrix hell? before being sucked into the serververse, a reference to the Matrix franchise which explored the ideas of a computer simulation world. When LeBron first comes face to face with LG, he appears as a large disembodied head and says, who dares disturb the great and powerful LG? A reference to the Wizard of Oz, when Dorothy and the gang come up against the great and powerful Oz for the first time. LG later also quips, jiggle me this, a reference to the Riddler's classic catchphrase, riddle me this, in Batman Forever. Another catchphrase riff that is later heard from LG is when he transforms the tunes from traditional animation into CG animation and screams, they're alive, they're alive! A reference to the he's alive, he's alive cry of Dr. Frankenstein in Universal's 1931 Frankenstein film. When LeBron is less than cooperative with LG, he instructs his robot assistant Pete to send him through the serververse. As Pete spins a dial to determine where LeBron LeBron is going to wind up, various worlds flash past, including Orbit City from the Jetsons, Bedrock from the Flintstones, Hogwarts from Harry Potter, Gotham City from Batman, Themyscira from Wonder Woman, and Emerald City from The Wizard of Oz. As LeBron is sent flying past the worlds, most of which were listed on Pete's spinner, there's Westeros, Hogwarts, Emerald City, Orbit City, Bedrock, DC World, Matrix World with the red and blue pills from the film inside, a film noir world with Casablanca and the Maltese Falcon, and a generic filmmaking world. Themes and pieces of dialogue from the films and series briefly play as he passes their orbit. Most noticeably, as LeBron flies past Emerald City, the Wicked Witch of the West can be heard saying, I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog too. And as he flies through the Casablanca side of the noir world, Bogart's classic, is looking at you, kid, can be heard. Back with LG, he's seen talking with LeBron's hostage son. This scene takes place in a clinical white showroom where Al stands behind a large desk dubbed the LG Bar. Of course, this is a clear reference to the Apple Store showrooms and their genius bars. Furthermore, LG is dressed in a black turtleneck, jeans and large round glasses, referencing Apple founder Steve Jobs. Of course, LeBron is sent down into Toon World where there's plenty of references to classic cartoons, but we'll get to those in another section. Marvin the Martian turns up in Toontown and points his gun at Bugs and LeBron, flicking through various Ray settings, finally landing on Charles Ray, an allusion to the jazz and soul great, the genius Ray Charles. Another music reference from Toontown sees Bugs Bunny dressed as MC Hammer from his You Can't Touch This music video. The basketball game at the end of the film also somehow manages to segue itself into a rap battle sequence where Porky Pig takes on the moniker Notorious P.I.G, a reference to early rap superstar the Notorious B.I.G, aka Biggie Smalls, considered to be one of the greatest and most influential rappers of all time. After his time in Toon World, LeBron and Bugs hijack Marvin the Martian's ship. Across the front of the ship is written A113. This is a number that's found hidden in lots of animated films and series that have been worked on by various alumni of the CalArts school, particularly those who graduated from the school in the middle 80s and went on to lead the animation renaissance at Disney, Pixar and other studios. A113 was the number of the classroom used by graphic design and character animation students, such as Brad Bird, John Lasseter, Tim Burton, Steven Hillenburg, Gennady Tartakovsky, Glenn Keane, Andrew Stanton and Henry Selleck. On the ship, Bugs commandeers and in one scene talks about the need to assemble the tunes, mimicking the classic voice patterns of William Shatner's Captain James Kirk of the original Star Trek series. LeBron, meanwhile, sketches out his idea for the ultimate basketball team up on a whiteboard, insisting on characters such as Superman, King Kong, The Matrix Trinity, Batman and Iron Giant. In an early trailer, Gandalf from Lord of the Rings can even be seen written down, but strangely, this didn't make it into the final cut of the movie. The next sequence is a rapid fire montage which sees LeBron and Bugs rounding up the tunes from various worlds. Within each world, respective themes and scores play. 
First is a quick stop into Harry Potter World, where LeBron adorns a Hufflepuff uniform. Next is DC World, where LeBron and Bugs are turned into Batman and Robin, and Daffy is seen as Superman. Chasing a runaway train, they are shot through Batman's Gotham City, clearly with a noir-inspired visual design akin to the classic 90s Batman the Animated Series. Then they wind up through Superman's Metropolis, again with a design taking cues from the late 90s Superman the Animated Series. Superman's Fortress of Solitude is also briefly visited. And then they wind up through Aquaman's underwater world of Atlantis. On a train platform are seen various DC series characters, including Clark Kent, Commissioner Gordon, Selina Kyle, aka Catwoman, Dick Grayson, aka Nightwing, and Jimmy Olsen. And inside the train we even get a glimpse of Lois Lane, Alfred the Butler, and pre-clown Harley Quinn. Later, Superman is also seen coming to the rescue before being flanked by the Justice League, including Aquaman, Batgirl, the Green Lantern, and the Flash. All the DC characters in this sequence take on their designs from the DC Animated Universe franchise. Throughout the scene, various themes are heard, including Danny Elfman's 1989 Batman theme, Neil Hefty's 1966 Batman theme, Theme, and John Williams's 1978 Superman theme. Next up is Mad Max World, where we find the Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote taking part in the enormous chase sequence from Fury Road. LeBron and Bugs are seen here behind the wheel of a vehicle as War Boys. One of the more bizarre worlds here is Austin Powers World. An iconic Austin Powers transition plays to segue the scene, which inserts a couple of tunes into a scene with Dr. Evil and his son Scott. Alma Fudd takes the role of Mini-Me, while Sylvester is seen as Dr. Evil's cat. Next up, classic 1942 film Casablanca gets its dues. Here, Sam is seen playing the piano in the role of Dooley Wilson's pianist character, also named Sam, from the original movie. Ingrid Bergman's classic lime, Sing it, Sam is played. We then get a glimpse of Bugs and LeBron in chic white suits, resembling the get-up of Humphrey Bogart's Rick in the movie. Next up, a brief trip to Game of Thrones, Westeros sees Foghorn Leghorn in the role of Daenerys riding on a dragon, proclaiming, Winter I say, winter is coming. Later, in a training sequence, he's also heard crying, I say, I say, hi-ho silver, a riff on the Lone Ranger's classic catch cry, hi-ho silver away, which he would yell out while rearing his horse, Silver. Next is an entry into Matrix World, which sees Granny inserted into the opening scene of the original film in place of Trinity. Speedy Gonzalez is also here for the ride, taking a Neo-esque role as he slows down time to dodge bullets. LeBron and Bugs also burst in, Bron dressed like Neo and Bugs resembling Morpheus. And finally, another trip to a DC-inspired world where Lola Bunny is found taking part in the Trial of the Gods under the tutelage of Wonder Woman and the Amazonians. LeBron and Bugs also appear as mighty warriors in a cool sequence that takes on the aesthetics of a comic book panel. In between all the madness, an incredibly random cameo of Rick and Morty can be seen as they ride their space cruiser up to the window of Marvin's ship. Later in the film there's also another small nod to a classic sci-fi franchise, Universal's Back to the Future, where this pops up on a screen after a goal is scored by the tunes. Al also quotes the movie Training Day when he says, King Kong ain't got nothing on me. King Kong ain't got shit on me. Talking about the basketball game, the remainder of pop culture references throughout the film are mostly focused on the numerous characters that appear in the crowd of the event. There are literally hundreds of characters here, some obvious, some super obscure. It's pretty difficult to get decent shots of every character, so please just allow me to quickly rattle a bunch of them off. I'm sure I've missed some here, so once again, let me know down in the comments. Here goes. Various Hanna-Barbera favourites are seen, including the entire Flintstones cast and their obscure alien pal, the Great Gazoo, the Jetsons family, Scooby-Doo and Mystery Inc, most noticeably in their form from the 2020 movie Scoob, Yogi Bear and Boo Boo, Magilla Gorilla, Jabba Jaw, Captain Caveman, Mighty Mitor, Peter Potamus and his time-travelling balloon, Space Ghost, Frankenstein Jr and his pal Buzz, Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt, 
Egu, Gleep and Gloop from Herculoids, and Dick Dastardly, Muttley, and Penelope Pitstop from Wacky Races. Other animated characters making appearances include the Thundercats, Migo, Gwangi, and Michi from Smallfoot, the latter two actually voiced in the original movie by New Legacy cast members LeBron and Zendaya, the Iron Giant, and the Warner siblings from Animaniacs. Another bulk of characters are made up of Batman heroes and villains. There's 66 versions of Batman and Robin, an entire roster of 66 Batman villains such as Catwoman, the Penguin and the Joker. The 92 variant of the Penguin is also seen, as is the 92 Catwoman and also the 89 Joker. A bunch of 89 Joker goons also make the cut as do a bunch of Joker girls, and 1997's Mr. Freeze from Batman and Robin can also be seen. Another DC nemesis, General Zod from Superman also appears. There's various Wizard of Oz characters such as Dorothy and Toto and the Wicked Witch of the West and one of her monkeys. A bunch of Game of Thrones characters appear such as the Night King and the White Walkers and the Dragon Drogon. Lord of the Rings characters also pop in to say hello, including Frodo, Gandalf, Gollum and Elven Warriors, while various Harry Potter Quidditch players appear, both from Gryffindor and Slytherin factions, while franchise villain Lord Voldemort also shows up. Plenty of agents from the Matrix including Mr. Smith and also franchise heroine Trinity. Randomly there's a ton of characters from 300 including King Leonidas and a squad of Spartan warriors as well as film antagonists the Immortals. Similarly a squad of Wonder Woman Amazons can be seen and heaps and heaps and heaps of warboys from Mad Max. Other Warner favourites include King Kong, The Mask, Pennywise from It, Robocop, Beetlejuice, Gizmo and the Gremlins, Alex Delarge and the Clockwork Orange Droogs, Tony Soprano, Mama Fratelli from The Goonies, Will Smith's Jim West from Wild Wild West, Baby Jane from Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, a bunch of nymphomaniac nuns from The Devils, and a present day Clint Eastwood. I swear on it, Marty McFly from Back to the Future 3 also appears here. Though that film is with Universal, it didn't stop that other Back to the Future reference from happening. More generic film characters also appear representing various film genres, including Zorro, The Green Hornet, Alice in Wonderland, some generic cowboys, gangsters, medieval knights, pirates, 19th century ship captains, and devils. Also seen scattered around are some generic 1920s film starlets and 1950s film starlets. Of course, Space Jam wouldn't be complete without a few celebrity cameos as well. Popular comedian Sarah Silverman appears as a Warner Brothers agent, as does actor Steven Yeun, most recently seen in Minari and The Walking Dead. Comedic actor Lil Rel Howery appears as a game day commentator alongside famed sportscaster Ernie Johnson Jr. There's a few other sporting cameos here, but we'll get to them later in the video. Actor, rapper and comedian Slink Johnson, best known as the star of TV sitcom Black Jesus, is seen as a Warner Brothers studio security guard. Michael B. Jordan makes a brief appearance in a bait and switch moment where he's confused for NBA superstar Michael Jordan, the star of the original Space Jam. A great part of his cameo is him trying to pep up the tunes by chanting, clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose, the catch cry of the Dylan Panthers football team in the series Friday Night Lights in which Michael B. Jordan got his big break. Bill Murray also has a Blink and You'll Miss Him cameo appearance during the end credits, reprising his role as himself from the original Space Jam film. Voice-wise, of course, Zendaya is providing the voice of Lola Bunny, while Gabriel Iglesias takes on the role of Speedy Gonzalez. Once again, Justin Roiland voices his characters Rick and Morty. One huge surprise here is that Rosario Dawson is providing the voice of Wonder Woman during the world hopping sequence. Of course, it wouldn't be a Space Jam movie without some references to the classic Looney Tunes cartoons. Of course, in the opening 1998 flashback scene, young LeBron is seen with his Looney Tunes backpack and again is seen playing a Looney Tunes video game on his Game Boy. There's numerous instances of Bugs asking, what's up Duck, throughout the film, while Porky continuously remarks, that's all folks. Bugs also remarks, this means war, when he's first turned into CGI form. Another catchphrase from the early cartoons, borrowed from early cinema icon Groucho Marx. When LG and Pete first send LeBron to Toontown, one of the the world that shows up on his spinner is Albuquerque, a reference to a classic Bugs gag where he would emerge from his hole in the wrong place and remark, I knew I should have taken that left point at Albuquerque. 
The Looney Tunes theme, the merry-go-round broke down, and the Merry Melodies theme, Merrily We Roll Along, are heard in various iterations at numerous times throughout the film. Other classic gags that are referenced in Toon World are the duck season, rabbit season bit from Chuck Jones's classic hunting trilogy, the usage of TNT and other Acme branded weapons and traps, a cliff dropping gag, the hilarious Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote fake tunnel gag, as well as the scientific name gag often featured in their shorts. Bugs appears briefly as a barber referencing Chuck Jones's Rabbit of Seville, considered one of the all time greats. This could also be a sly reference to LeBron's talk show, The Shop. Bugs even transforms into the meme famous Big Chungus. A two second throwaway sight gag from 1941's Wabbit Twubble that took on a whole new life of its own on the internet. Numerous other classic style tune gags are also seen during the basketball match. As LeBron flies into Looney Tunes world, he slams through the iconic Looney Tunes colour rings seen at the end of many cartoons. There's also an instance of the tunes bursting through the colour rings, alluding to these classic cartoon outros. In the main street of Tune World, we can see a palace that advertises a singing frog, a reference to fan favourite Chuck Jones character Michigan J Frog. A cinema on the strip is named Carnegie Hall, like the music hall seen in classic tune Corny Concerto. It's also seen playing a selection of music themed Bugs Bunny shorts which featured him as a conductor, such as Baton Bunny, Long Haired Hair and Rhapsody Rabbit. Another Bugs Bunny cartoon, Hair Raising Hair, is referenced on a banner which reads hair raising held up by a spectator at the end of the basketball game. Again in DC world Daffy appears as Super Duck, a throwback to the 1956 Superman parody cartoon Stupa Duck. In the Mad Max world there's also an appearance from super obscure Looney Tunes antagonist Nasty Canasta who appeared in three cartoons in the 1950s. The landscape of Looney Tunes world is even made up of various elements from classic Looney Tunes cartoons, most notably the Wagnerian setting of What's Opera Doc, Planet X from Duck Dodgers and the 24 and a half century where we can also see Marvin the Martian spaceship the Martian Maggot, the evil scientist's castle from Hair Raising Hair, Foghorn Leghorn's Barn, a Mexican village from Speedy Gonzalez cartoons, the Midwest setting of the Roadrunners and the fancy mansion from Daffy Duck's His Bitter Half. A western town often seen in Looney Tunes cartoons is also seen in an extended sequence. During a break in play during the big game, Bugs appears on the sidelines as an old timey game announcer. In the bottom corner of the screen is the name of the show he's hosting, Bugs Bunny's Wild World of Sports. This is of course a reference to a 1989 television clip show special of the same name. There's also plenty of Space Jam 1 references here too. Of course the most obvious is that appearance of the film poster in the LG pitch sequence at the beginning. While sadly not actually featuring the original movie's theme song, its opening sequence which shows various stock footage of LeBron's career highlights is highly reminiscent of the one from the first which does the same but with Michael Jordan. There's a scene where LeBron mentors his sons on an outdoor basketball court similar to the flashback scene with Michael and his father in the original. All of the tunes are initially seen in their OG 90s Tune Squad outfits while training prior to being turned into 3D characters. The Nerdlux, characters introduced in the original movie also appear numerous times as spectators of the big basketball game. And once again Bill Murray makes a blink and you'll miss an appearance in his original role as himself during the credits. While Michael Jordan doesn't appear we do get the Michael B Jordan gag. The tunes joke about bringing Michael Jordan back. Daffy quips, you wanted Michael A Jordan but you got Michael B Jordan. While Sylvester laments, it's been 25 years I thought he'd aged gracefully. When it's first mentioned to Bugs that LeBron wants the tunes to help him out on the court, Bugs in his famously meta tone says, you want me, a tune, to play with you in a high stakes basketball game? Sounds familiar. And finally the movie is absolutely littered with sporting references too. At the top young LeBron is seen wearing the number 23. This could either be a nod to Michael Jordan who wore the iconic number at the Bulls or simply be a reference to the fact that 23 is the number that LeBron has likewise worn throughout much of his NBA career. When LeBron first lands in Looney Tunes world he slams into the ground creating a basketball and hoop shaped smoke cloud while making a Nike logo 
logo shaped hole in the ground. Before LeBron takes to the court for the big game, a shot of his basketball sneakers is seen with the names of his fictional family members written on them. In real life, this is also a good luck tradition of LeBron's, but of course with the names of his real life family. Throughout the big game at the end, Al G coaches the goon squad from the sideline, taking on various American sporting personalities. Firstly, there's Bobby Knight, aka The General, one of the most successful college basketball coaches of all time. Well known for wearing red sweaters on the court, one 1985 incident also saw him throwing a chair across the court, which is also parodied in this scene. LG is also seen in what is likely a parody of NFL coach Bill Belichick of the New England Patriots, who's always seen in some kind of high-tech headgear. During the game, after an impressive play, Lola runs towards the camera with outstretched arms and throws a wink to the audience. This is of course a nod to this iconic photo, which spawned from a 2010 play between Dwayne Wade and LeBron, then at Miami Heat. The game comes to an end with a huge power play by LeBron, which results in himself and LG being immortalised in an ever popular trading card like moment. At the very end of the movie, Bugs asks LeBron if he can stick around for Taco Tuesday. This is a catchphrase that LeBron has made famous on his social media accounts. He even tried to get the phrase trademarked, but was blocked by the United States Patent Office. Throughout the movie, various sporting cameos include, once again, sportscaster Ernie Johnson Jr. and basketballers Sue Bird, Aja Wilson, Neka Ogwa McKay, Draymond Green, Damian Lillard, Clay Thompson, Anthony Davis, and Diana Taurasi, the latter five of which, in computerized form, make up the roster of The Goon Squad. Davis, nicknamed The Brow, takes on the character of The Brow, while Diana Taurasi, nicknamed White Mamba, likewise takes on this moniker as her villain alter ego. Randy Mims, LeBron's personal assistant and manager, also appears in a brief cameo during a barbershop sequence. LeBron's personal barber, Nick Castellanos, seen regularly on The Shop, also appears to make a cameo here. And finally, alongside Bill Murray in golf gear, if you can't tell already, I just love this Bill Murray cameo and I will use it every chance I get. The credits also offer brief cameos of UFC champ Ronda Rousey going a few rounds against Granny and Speedy, and tennis Grand Slam champ Naomi Osaka playing a high-powered match against Lola Bunny. While he doesn't physically appear, Lola at one point makes mention of Iverson, a clear nod to Philadelphia great Alan Iverson. At the very end of the credits, two small logos are seen, a carrot representing Bugs and a crown representing King LeBron James, an insignia that's often featured on his game sneakers and official merchandise. And at that, that brings us to the end of this crazy Easter egg breakdown. If you've enjoyed this video and want to dive deep into the history of all your favourite tunes, take a look at my continuing Cartoon Evolution series, where I have covered plenty of the Looney Tunes crew. So, did you catch anything that I missed in Space Jam A New Legacy, if you did, make sure to fire away with them all down below. If you didn't, make sure to still let me know what your favourite easter eggs or cameos were. Hey everyone, if you haven't yet, smash that big old subscribe button up on your screen to keep up to date with all my content and hit that like button down below. Also don't forget to check me out on social media and please consider supporting me over on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month for exclusive videos, early access content and to get your name up on the screen. Thanks again for watching.